What's going on there guys? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this April 14, 2022 night. Uh, Thursday evening, about 6.56 p.m. California time. Latest quake out there shows a 2.0 earthquake into the area of the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity around uh, the globe or around the flat scale model. I keep saying the globe, right? But then I keep getting hammered about it. Map, globe, however you want to look at it. The latest map um, from the USGS here. Stand by for just a second while I get this thing up and going. There we go. Still multicasting here on a couple different networks. So I'm doing a couple different things here while I'm in the, uh, in the process. Stand by for just a second here. Alright, so latest map here on the USGS showing a little bit of activity kicking up here into the Southern California region and also pretty much up and down the West Coast. I know we've been pretty quiet in terms of uh, the multitude of quakes that we've been seeing here lately along the West Coast, but it looks like we're starting to get out of that trend, at least here for California, and uh, starting to see a little bit of a return of movement in our, in our uh, specific areas that we watch here around Nevada. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano in the Ridgecrest area. All seeing uh, some movement today. Kind of ramping up and filling in these little quiet zones. Uh, Ridgecrest area getting quite a bit of earthquake activity. Uh, very close to the Garlock Fault Zone as well. That is a sheer fault system down there. Very prominent feature in the Southern California region. Let me go ahead and show you guys the uh, info on the Garlock Fault Zone. Garlock Fault here. This is the uh, Caltech Education uh, Information Center when it comes to the types of faults and um, pretty much what they're capable of. It's a pretty cool index of specific faults in Southern California. So it is a 250 kilometer long uh, fault system, a left lateral strike slip there in Southern California. This is for the Garlock Fault. A uh, couple nearby communities there. Most recent ruptures, ruptures was back in uh, 1050 AD near Tehachapi and 1500 AD near the uh, Johannesburg area. Slip rate about 2 to 11 mm per year probably averages about 7 mm, 7 mm per year. So there is quite a bit of stress built up here on this area. If you do the math, which I'm not going to do the math here, but you think about the 7 mm per year and the last uh, rupture roughly around 1500, that's a lot of time that has passed in this area. I still think the Garlock Fault Zone uh, is overlooked. Uh, and it's not really talked about a lot, you know, in terms of the uh, big one. But uh, they're always talking about the San Andreas Fault. San Andreas, right? The southern section. That's a big one, too. I just think we're overdue in terms of uh, many fault systems down there. Uh, interval between major ruptures, roughly between 200 and 3,000 years, uh, depending on the fault segment. That's what they claim. That's what they state. But man, could you imagine 3,000 years of 7 mm built up? That would be crazy. Uh, probable magnitude 6.8 to 7.6 magnitude. Uh, probable. Okay, these are just a little studies put out by geologists. Um, but anyway, it is a uh, pretty extensive fault system, and it's been a while since it's been uh, let loose. That's going to be this system right here. Runs into the San Andreas Fault, by the way. See this little area right here? We got the Garlock Fault Zone. Western section runs right into the San Andreas Fault. Of course, that's kind of not really the southern end. Southern end is this extent of this fault system right here, right around the San Bernardino Mountains, southward to the Salton Sea area. Uh, this segment right here is uh, the big one, right? One that uh, is going to definitely uh, create some havoc down there in Southern California. Uh, let's see here. I found a little article here, and I don't know if I shared this here on the channel or not. This is an article put out by the uh, USGS, the state of stress at the southernmost end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, talks about the integration of seismicity patterns and focal mechanisms with fault structure observed in seismic reflection data beneath the Salton Sea. Salton Sea, I think, does play a major part in it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to read all of this here, but I am going to include this PDF article from the USGS in the description in this update video below. So uh, a little bit of reading. There's actually quite a bit of reading. 
but it is pretty cool to check out. Uh, the Southern San Andreas Fault in California has not had a large earthquake in approximately 300 years. Yet, the average recurrence for the previous five ruptures is about 180 years. So think about that. 180 years. I mean, we're, we've been known to be long overdue for a while on this one. But man, you know, eventually it's going to spring and, and pop pretty big. 8.1. Uh, largest probable magnitude on this uh, specific fault system. Let me check this out here real quick here. San Andreas Fault Zone. Uh, let's see here. Southern area. Well, I wonder if these guys are going to... Yeah, here's... um. I guess they call it the Mojave segment, even though these guys are saying the last major rupture was January 9th, 1857, but I don't think that was the southern end. Uh, probable magnitude 6.8 to 8.0, but uh, gotta remember the a little bit further south is where you run into the southern segment of it. But I think 8.1 is a pretty good magnitude to estimate when that thing does decide to go. But of course we could all could get this thing going all at once, right? We could have an earthquake down here on the southern end, eight pointer. Create some havoc up here on the uh, on the Garlock Fault Zone, so we could have multiple large quakes down here one day uh, when things finally decide to adjust back from all the stress that's been built up over the hundreds of years. Let me tell you, it's still been uh, relatively quiet here, folks. We don't ever see too much earthquake activity here along the southern area of the San Andreas Fault Zone, and that's this right here in the uh, dark red line. So one day. I just, you know, I just, I feel it. I feel like something's coming here really soon. I don't know if it's going to be the San Andreas Fault or the Cascadia. We'll see what happens. Uh, so a little bit of activity along the San Jacinto Fault Zone, which is another uh, stress buildup. And uh, uh, it's on the Pacific side of the plate boundary here. Of course, the plate boundary, North American Pacific plate here. A little bit of microquake activity filling in today, although it's been relatively quiet over the past few days. And one earthquake here in the red circle. Ocotillo, California with a 1.1 and uh, just typical movement looks like typical stress building up on the southern section of the San Andreas Fault no doubt one little earthquake here along the creeping section Parkfield section 1.3 and a little bit of uh, a little bit more larger quake activity up north near Soledad in the Pinnacles area with a couple twos kicking off there uh, over the last 24 hours Bay Area looks pretty quiet here not a whole lot going on in that uh, area of the plate boundary. Northern California, about the same. One earthquake here outside of uh, MacArthur area. This one uh, kind of up there, kind of way up there. It's on the uh, MacArthur fault zone. In fact, I've never actually heard of that one. Negative on the the depth of those earthquake of that earthquake, so it's pretty shallow. It's in the uh, Timbered Crater Study area, Lava Springs. I know there is some uh, old volcanic symbols or old volcanic features up here. This sits well north of Mount Lassen, which is right about here. But uh, all this area is definitely a volcanic, a lot of historical volcanic data and um, studies in that region. Oregon and Washington, not a whole lot going on. One earthquake here uh, around the Longview area. A couple small microquakes, nothing really going on there at the Mount St. Helens area. Or Mount Rainier. We're gonna check that right off the bat, though. See what's going on here at the uh, Tremor map here. Look at that, nothing. Zip zero again, folks. I think that's. I don't know. Um, I'm calling. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna message these guys again. Find out what's going on because it goes from from uh, pretty active just down to zero instantly. Uh, volcanic activity here at Mount St. Helens. We're not going to go through all these today. We're just going to check uh, Mount St. Helens uh, seismograph recorded data and see what's going on here. See if there's any quake activity showing up. A little bit of movement here within the last hour. So see that little microquake and uh, some other really smaller ones there. Check out the previous or uh, previous UTC time, which would be earlier this afternoon, our time. Uh, let's see what these guys are reporting here. Uh, yeah. one earthquake. Definitely one, right? You guys can see that. That's definitely a well-defined signature of an earthquake. And a little one right there as well. So this one here, looking by, judging by the, uh, the way these, uh, 
these lines are here. Uh, that's probably, I'm guessing, maybe a upper one, maybe a two magnitude. Some other smaller quakes in there as well. USGS not showing anything, and the EM or the uh, PNSN network really isn't either. Uh, they got these older quakes here from two days ago. So where's all the activity that we've been looking at um, on these seismographs every night, right? We, we check this every night to see what's uh, being recorded. And uh, two days of activity missing. Nothing showing up. All is good, according to the PNSN. All right, let's move on here before I get booted. <laughs> yeah, see what's going on out here around the Yellowstone area. Up here around Hebgen Lake, some movement. Also southern in here, we were looking at that swarming activity. Let's go ahead and check out the southern area of Yellowstone and National Park. See what we got over here. It looks like it's calmed down a little bit. It's right around Flag Ranch, seeing the epicenter of this little microquake activity, including an upper one right there and some other smaller quakes. Over the past few hours, only one uh, quake there, readable it looks like. Maybe another smaller one in, in the mix as well. But uh, overall, not a whole lot uh, going on there at Yellowstone currently. Looks like things kind of mellowing out for the moment. USGS did report that activity though. Uh, Texas area kind of kicking up as well. Seems like when the west coast kicks up, we get this inland movement as well up around the uh, the old North American Craton region kind of spells that little outline of activity here. <clears throat> so, uh, a couple microquakes out there around the western part of Texas, New Madrid zone. Uh, one earthquake this morning, it looks like, around the Wrigley, Tennessee area, 1.2. Uh, Puerto Rico, not a whole lot going on here in Puerto Rico today, folks. Just some uh, typical movement, southwest edge of Puerto Rico, South America, about the same here. It's been kind of spotty down in the South America region. Uh, here at the uh, triple point junction, it looks like, of a couple different plate boundaries. 5.0 at 10 kilometers here in the southern part of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> what do we got over here? Just kicking up a 5.5 earthquake in the China region. Looks like just a little bit ago. Getting a little bit of westward pressure here with these earthquakes kicking, kicking up. Uh, including a 4.5 in the Italy area. Looks like we may be uh, adjusting accordingly over here in this area of the world. Haven't seen a whole lot of movement or activity here around the uh, Philippine Plate northward. A uh, little movement here around the Tonga area, but this even this is older movement from this morning. So you can scratch out all of this activity and look at this pressure over here to the west. Uh, and that's kind of what we're looking at currently. Some adjustment going on throughout China and the area. Watch the Middle East pretty closely as well. Uh, Hawaii. <coughs> Big Island out here around the southeast flank area. Looking uh, still pretty active. Quite a few twos. I had to take a drink there. And um, no unusual movement to report currently at the Big Island. Let's see what else we got here. Alaska area looks pretty uh, typical, right? Quite a few microquakes. About 71 earthquakes or so throughout the region. All very typical for a major plate boundary. Very similar to what we see here in California. So uh, let's see here. We checked out Tremor. We checked out the Yellowstone map. Uh, let's check out Earthquakes Canada here while we're on it and uh, see what's uh, being reported from the folks up north. And uh, still some activity. It looks like up around the um, northern end of the San Andreas Fault. Let me pull up the, or the, uh, not the San Andreas Fault, the uh, Juan de Fuca plate. Cascadia subduction zone, right? Got a habit of saying that. That maybe, maybe the San Andreas Fault's going to go because I think I, I've been saying that a lot. Uh, so a little bit of movement here in the red circle, and it's back before the subduction zone of the Cascadia, which is right here on this blue line. Uh, this here is the uh, kind of like in between the uh, Juan de Fuca plate and the Explorer plate up here north. A little bit of activity kicking up here in the red circles, and the most recent quake up here around the. Uh, the village of Queen Charlotte, BC area, with a 1.1, 1 .1, 19 kilometers there into into the uh, area. Solar weather activity, of course, we had that kind of kick up right today, into the G2 category, reached up around the KP index of about six, right there earlier. It has since kind of leveled out, uh, currently right around the KP index, KP index of four. We are seeing, seeing that uh, 
aurora probability there at the higher latitudes with this even with this type of uh, uh, KP index and uh, looks like it could continue to a G1 storm we'll see if that kicks back up but it's kind of hard to say if it will um, looking at some activity kick up here on the Sun not for sure exactly where this uh, current sea flare activity is kicking up but it is producing a little bit of uh, well, some global de delayer absorption with the X-ray flux here. See that map kind of getting that uh, amplified amplified there on the sea flares, creating a little bit of radio blackout around the. Uh, uh, looks like the western part of the uh, Pacific out there. I'm still not for sure exactly where this is coming from here. Looking at the sun, looks like it could be around the bend here. Uh, this sunspot right here is pretty bright. Looks like some type of flaring going on. Definitely not Earth directed, but uh, of course, any type of flaring, if it's even somewhat within view, will affect the Earth slightly. Uh, but we'll see. We'll get to a little bit more data on that as it comes in. Uh, but for now, it looks like just uh, kind of elevating a little bit uh, into the uh, mid sea level. Look, looks like about mid sea. It looks like it's starting to take a downward trend here a little bit. So. All right, folks. Um, yeah, look for that uh, article, this publication here from the uh, USGS. I think it's a pretty cool read. Uh, if you got a few minutes about the southern end, southernmost end of the San Andreas Fault, they do talk a little bit about how uh, possible the intervals here have been extended as far as the years go, just due to the uh, uh, the water down there in the Salton Sea area. I'm not going to read into all of this, but. Uh, Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a, it's a good read, folks. If you like earthquake data and you want to learn about the San Andreas Fault, the southern end, and the possibility of the big one down there, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, read it when you can, you know, and, and that will be uh, provided here in the link. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and uh, provide that into the uh, description of this update video. So have a good night, folks. We will chat you guys a little bit later on. Just stay safe out there and uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening. Take care.